Hi everybody, I thought I would show you today how we got this beautiful system to actually be hooked to something. Today I was going to show you how to, uh, how we hooked our water heater to our solar system. So um, let me show you how that worked. Okay, down here in my beautiful basement, this is where my water heater is. And right above us here is my kitchen. So we tried to make it as close as possible so that we could have shorter wiring. Because if you have shorter wiring, of course, it makes it cheaper for you. You don't have to pay so much on wires, which can be quite a lot. And also, my hubby says that if it's shorter wiring, it also helps the, the current not have to travel so far. You have better power and all of that going through the wiring. So also, interesting to note to make sure you definitely want a shorter pathway. So um, we have here this orange wire. These are heavy gauged wiring for a 240. And um, it goes from the water heater all the way up. We kind of tried to be close. Don't know if you can tell. We wired it all through here. And there's a hole back over there in the corner that goes up to my kitchen. And that's where the wires are going through. So this distance maybe from the water heater to my kitchen, well, I would say maybe 10, 15 feet. So still 10, 15 feet of wiring we had to do to get from the water heater to the kitchen area, which is where we have the inverter and uh, the switches set up up there. So this water heater is, um, I think, a 60 gallon water heater, 50, 60 gallon. And uh, it has two heating elements in it one on the top and one on the bottom and of course they don't go on at the same time they have each of the elements though are 4500 watts so um, we had to have a 6000 watt inverter just for this guy here because he's a big guy so it has to have the 4500 watts of one element be able to run on it at a time because both of them will not turn on at the same time but still 4500 watts just for the one and then of course any power surges so you have to have your inverter at least up to 6000 watts because we also have the uh, well pump on the same system so the well pump and the water heater have to run off of the same inverter. So 6,000 watt inverter minimum for this lovely water heater set up here. So um, let me take you back up to the kitchen uh, and you can see how we have it wired up there. Um, I don't know if you can tell. This is where the wires coming in. Hubby wired it, but just this one and these are our batteries. We have the batteries close by down here in the basement because it's cooler and you don't have to worry about the temperature because sometimes batteries get hot or also for ventilation we had um, set up some fans so that the, it could get the circulation for the batteries. Um, this piping here, I'll show you real quick. These pipes, we just got this um, pipe you can get from Home Depot for like your rain gutters and stuff and it works actually really good for using as a vent pipe for blowing in air for the batteries and uh, hubby sent, set up a nice little system for that so in the summertime we turn that on to make sure it gets a good circulation for those batteries right there so um, let's go up to the kitchen Okay, we are in the kitchen now, and you might wonder uh, where we would be possibly able to fit this inverter and wiring and everything else. Because we got a wall to wall cabinets here, but they're for my kitchen, so I'm not like I can put an inverter in one of these. So, where am I hiding, stashing all this stuff? Well, when we moved into this house, it had a lovely little broom closet over here, but a broom closet, you know, fits a broom not a big whole solar system but we decided to do it anyway so this is our closet we have chosen to convert into our solar collection and it's small this is um maybe two feet wide in here 
and foot deep so it's a very tight working space so if you're doing this um i hope you're a skinny guy because <laughs> it's a tight fit closet here otherwise um you might want to rethink a better idea for you but it works it's all that we had to use for our space so this is the one that we chose to work with okay um down here let's see if you can see this um let me zoom in zooming zooming down there that like circle thing right there that marks the entrance from the basement those wires coming out one of those orange ones was the water heater and it came through there we made a tiny hole and uh, brought the wires up through right there so nothing fancy we just put a little spot in the floor there and called it good and let's see we have these orange and uh, yellow wires you can't see it's very dark in here sorry about that let's back out okay the orange wire here runs I don't know if you can see turn around here okay it's coming a little bit light a little bit okay the orange is the one that was on the water heater this one here and it runs up to the top up here and we have them hooked all together to this yellow wire which is over here this yellow one see each of these switches we got hooked up to this yellow wire perfectly so the one big orange wire was spliced all apart to hook each of these yellow ones um, let's see this orange wire is a 10-2 rated wire and it's 24 amp cable rating so it's pretty strong and the yellow ones, of course, can handle the 240 volt running through it. And we separated it into three different switches because it give us a little bit more option. We have two different solar systems, so that's more bonus for us if one doesn't have enough charge. So this one on number one is that big, huge group of panels we have outside, and we have it hooked here. It has its own separate inverter and battery bank. So if the sun is not doing it for this set, we can switch to solar number two. This one is on the smaller set of panels I showed you guys the other day. And this one has the main inverter that's only 6,000 watts. And um, we usually just have the water heater and the uh, well pump on this system alone. And then we run everything else on this one because I do a lot of cooking so my stove goes on here my washer dryer and major appliances and then just have the water heater left and the well pump on this one and if all else fails it's really bad weather whatever we do have the grid option available so if you're thinking about um, when you're setting up your system it's always good to have more than one option because you never know what might happen this is not your standard option these are uh, switch plates here but um, it's a cheaper one that we decided to go with you can buy these switches they're called disconnect switches these are not disconnect switches these are your regular wall switches but technically they usually have disconnect switches instead and they can run you one to three hundred dollars each for a disconnect switch so that would be three six nine hundred dollars for us here so we saved ourselves about a thousand bucks doing it this method which works perfectly fine and no problem at all so if you're handy and you think this method worked for you then don't hesitate it definitely works we've never had any problem with this method so it's I would go with it because it saves you a ton of money and that's always good in the long run Let's see, um, right now we have it on solar 2, which handles the job almost all the time for the water heater and the uh, well pump, and it does awesome, so um, we just usually keep this switched on. I am usually quite flighty and ditzy around the house when I'm 
really busy and kids are bothering me so hubby decided to put double switch and mark it real all over the place because I'm the one usually comes out over here and have to switch things around when I'm in the middle of cooking or kids all over me so this way um, he made sure that I can't miss it this is the one for this so you do not have to do it like this you don't have to have double switches and um, marked like crazy like we do it but it's for the ditzy wife safety precautions so um, if you need that then <laughs> definitely go with our method here if you happen to be having a ditzy wife on hand this would help her out a lot it works great for me so you can try it in your house or just work on the one switch you don't have to do double double one is definitely enough uh, to get the job done okay um i think we covered just about everything um our our heater water heater and stuff is on um 30 amps we have one on a 20 amp switch over there and the uh, other one was on 30 amps which seems to do it for the water heater so if you're wondering what size to get 30 amps is more than enough for your water heater to set up a nice little system here for on your solar so uh, let me know if you have any more questions I think I covered everything and that's about the gist of our setup here so uh, like and subscribe and bye